Good morning, everyone. My name is Amaya Cowan. I am the business development manager for Futamura Cellulose Films. First of all, welcome everyone to this webinar dedicated to compostable film solutions for confectionery packaging. I am delighted to be joined by a range of speakers from the industry. And today we have Patrick Lerche Larsen from International Sweet Trading, a confectionery brand owner. We have another Patrick, Patrick Gerritsen from bio for pack a packaging converter from this segment. And then we have Valentina Bergami and Flavio Giovannini from Sacmi Packaging and Chocolate a Machine Manufacturers. This promises to be a very interesting event. Now, a few words about uh, the format of the event. We will try our best to keep it under an hour. I know we are all busy. And uh, with regards to the format as well, we'll therefore keep the questions to the very end of the presentations. Of course, if you have questions throughout the event, please use uh, the little tab at the bottom of your screen, Q&A tab, and you can ask your questions. We will try to answer some of these questions without, throughout the event, and then we'll pick a few at the very end for a live Q&A. Okay. So, to start with, I am going to cover, just to kick us off, a, a two or three slides to give a bit of a background to the webinar and explain a little bit about our NatureFlex renewable compostable film range and why we believe so strongly that this is a good uh, offer for the confectionery industry. So why would you use compostable films, films like NatureFlex for confectionery? Well, the very first thing to say is that they have a proven record in this sector and a very strong supply history. We have been supplying particularly in twist wrap for many, many years. And the films are known to have a very good performance on the machinery. A lot of customers, a lot of brand owners, a lot of producers are looking for alternatives to today's plastic packaging, for instance, and NatureFlex provides a renewable and compostable alternative. Not only are the films produced from renewable raw materials, they provide an alternative end of life option, which is composting. And that can be composting at home, home composting or industrial composting. Oh, sorry, hiccup. They are, in my opinion, they are ideally suited to confectionery and small format packaging, particularly. Uh, so if you're thinking about individually wrapped sweets and their wrappers, they are going to be very difficult to collect. They're known to be hard to handle and they'll definitely be difficult to recycle. And therefore, um, in my opinion, they won't be recycled for many, many years and composting as an end of life becomes a very valuable solution and an easy message to the consumer. Now littering, let's talk about this. Uh, we know that some confectionery wrappers get littered into the environment. Now, because it's the nature of the product, you know, as you go product. Now we would not condone littering, but if they were littered, then the products will definitely have a lower environmental impact than the plastics that could be used in this application. Our products are used within themselves for a lot of markets, but they can also be used and they're compatible with biomaterials to produce more complex structures, what we call biolaminates. And these allow to open new sectors to meet different needs and higher specifications, for instance. All our NatureFlex claims are backed up by testing and certification whenever that is possible and relevant. And this is a strong visualization of the accreditation that we have. So if you're looking at industrial composting, for instance, Europe and USA, if you're looking at home composting, Europe and Australian, global forestry management and the Japan biomass mark. So what are the other benefits uh, of compostable materials like NatureFlex, where would you use it? Well, the first thing I would say is <clears throat> they can be used in many formats. Uh, and a lot of our customers use them because they align to the brand ethos. They're available in clear, white, metallized, 
and a wide range of color to make very attractive little packs. And the picture at the left hand corner is, is a very strong picture. You can use colors for flavor differentiation, red for strawberry, for instance. As a transparent paper, they have excellent dead fold and they make very tight twists every time. They are known to be the fastest twist film on the market with very high efficiencies, whichever um, um, machine they're used on and um, low level of miswraps. Because they don't rely on heat sealing for, um, for the twist closure, they're easy to opening for all hand dexterities, old and new generations. And if they're used in a sealed format, they also have easy opening because they are peelable seals. All the films have got extremely good aroma and oxygen barrier. And we have a range of different moisture protection right up to the high moisture levels, moisture barrier levels to protect all sorts of different products. So, you know, chocolate is one of the application and cereal bars is another application shown in this slide. They're used in combination with bio uh, materials, as I mentioned, but I'm sure Patrick will cover that a little bit stronger later. And this really brings me to the end of my little presentation is a very quick flavor of Nature Flex and why at Futamura, we strongly believe that compostable films are well suited for the confectionery industry. Uh, next, I will pass the hand to Patrick Lercher Larsen. Patrick is a key account manager at International Suite Trading, and he will be covering um, his business, how he adopted NatureFlex for some of his products and his vision in the future. So I'll stop sharing and leave it to Patrick to come in. Here is Patrick. Yes, so here we are. Thank you for the past over. And um, I would like to welcome everyone to this little webinar here. And uh, I'm happy now here to present uh, our product made with NatureFlex and how we ended up there. Uh, this is uh, just the beginning of a long journey. And uh, um, first of all, I will just tell who we are, International Street Trading. Um, old company founded 1994 with almost 26 years of experience. We are located uh, 140 kilometers south of uh, Berlin in Germany, 20 employees, all in own stock, all back office, all here in Kürten. Um, and then uh, we serve customers in whole Europe. Mainly our chains are the classic retail, cash and carry discounts, border sales. So you will find um, our products in all these chains. Um, the company International Sweet Trading also uh, works with uh, mission, vision and values. And um, our mission, is uh, to bring confectionery to life. Therefore, we contribute a very great variety of products while focusing on customers' needs. Our ambition is to be the industrial leader, prefer confectionery distributor for our customer, partners, and employees. And concerning values, to focus on customers, their needs, constantly aim not only to meet, but exceed our customers' expectations. Therefore, we are committed to be a flexible trust partner. A very important issue here, social and environmental responsibility. And this brings us to our product, Ecologisch Herz Lolly. It's translated like a, a heart lollipop. And uh, the cool is like our brand. And we made a game here to put in ecological with the brand Ecologisch. What was our, our, uh, our idea? Our idea was to make a, a lollipop, of course, with a paper stick. Normally in the business is uh, plastic, but paper is uh, yeah, more compostable. And to make the packaging in a compostable, in a certified compostable packaging, like the, uh, like the wrapper and the bag. Where do you sell, so, uh, like who needs such a product? Who wants to buy it? How do you communicate? What's your target group for us? For this beginning, our target group was the cash and carry, um, who sells mainly for the hotels, to bring this little hot lolly lollipop with love to the nature to the hotels. Everyone knows it uh, when they are uh, traveling that there are this little 
bag of confectionery on the on the bed, and uh, we we thought that we could um, that this would be the best way to uh, bring the product and um, to bring it to the uh, consumer. Normally, if, if you bring this in the beginning for a classic retail, and no one looks on the back, so this has to be the next step. So we have the question, communication via product uh, or an extra flyer when it's, uh, because normally the hotels only bring um, one lollipop at the back and uh, on the, every um, lollipop only uh, on the wrapping is uh, fitting uh, one certification. And uh, the question is if the people or the, the, the guests in the hotel knows what this means. So the idea was always maybe also to make a communication via flyer but that will also be extra paper. So actually, um, this will be something that the hotel communicate in their flyer that they have. Uh, and they're also thinking about the environment uh, concerning their uh, gift on the bed. The question was for us also, um, the price is a bit higher than normal for it. And will the classic hotel be ready to pay the price? Um, we we made the decision to try it, but we, we, we made it, it with a, a downsizing of the back. Normally, uh, with our classic hot lollipops, we have the 200 pieces in the back, and we actually uh, uh, downsize it, the back, so it's 100 pieces, uh, just to have the same price in the shelves. Um, so, uh, and this idea actually um, was very uh, positive from feedback from the buyers from the chains. So, as we presented our concept uh, in the different chains as in Catch and Carry in Germany, everyone listed this product. Actually, concerning the, even price was not an issue. So, we actually had this first experience that everyone um, is ready to make the, uh, to go this way. But um, it's, um, yeah, the beginning is that it's coming to the shelves and then we have to see if the consumers uh, are ready to pay the price. So it's always price in Germany, very big issue. Um, rollout was end of 2019. And uh, of course, then uh, we just um, started uh, end of 2019, 2020, all the hotel was closing. So we actually lost one and a half year. Uh, and now um, we, now where everything is opening up here in Germany, we are going to see first of all. Until now, it's very positive. Actually, it's like the experience we took with us on this issue. I just have to, I can just show you here. Um, this is how we presented this. Um, okay, now it's a Germany. A very, it's a product where we where, where you have the story. You have to do the storytelling when you uh, concerning the the foreign, and then um, the the issue pricing will, will be in the in the second row from the top. So we 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 made it in our talks so totally um, the flyer here to present all the certification and then the story of uh, why we do this. Um, next step opportunities for us uh, is uh, actually we are ready um, to make the next step and go into classic retail. And, and how do we do that? We need to make another downsizing from the back and um, we, we, we have to control it. So we will have an, a, a consumer price in the market for 1 euro 99. Um, why 1 euro 99? Um, that's because 199 in Europe, like in, in Germany, is a classic uh, price where, where people are ready to, um, to buy without knowing the taste of the product. So, um, so a downsizing will be made. Um, we, the good, uh, good thing about it is now we have the whole back of the customer. So we have the opportunity to make the whole communication of the product with all the certification and actually uh, printing a story on the backside and what what's, uh, give this product extra benefits. Even uh, also like for the cash and carry now, we are here other ready to pay the price, but we actually are very sure that um, when we work with 199, um, 
this will, will actually uh, make uh, the decision for the customer easier. And a very also coming issue now to, uh, to talk about this here, uh, to do that and further on. Um, later in the presentation here from my colleagues, uh, you will hear how it works. Actually, our experience here with the FOIA is like, it works totally like a normal FOIA. We don't only have to make very, very short adjustment at the production uh, with the heater, but then it's just like perfect. It's no, you don't need to do any investment concerning machines. Uh, and that's why it's a very, very good beginning. Price is still an issue. How do we come there? And how, uh, how do we get our vision to, to maybe uh, change the whole foil business? So actually um, we, we, we make a small step, but to make a big, big step, um, maybe the issue will be state regulations. Sometimes uh, we had it in a, in a strawberry, uh, in a strawberry straw, um, that we are not allowed to use any plastic straw uh, anymore. So, uh, and then it changed overnight. So that will actually be a very, very, um, we will be for a state regulation on this issue to, to bring this issue um, further. Yes, Amaya. Thank, thank you very much, Patrick, for the interesting presentation. I will now introduce our next speaker. Uh, this is another Patrick, Patrick Gerritsen. Patrick is a founder and CEO of bio for uh, A converter has been involved in the industry with compostable materials for many, many years. And Patrick will cover his experience on compostable packaging and also his vision. So I leave it to you, Patrick. Yes, first of all, I want to thank uh, Futamura that I can present uh, bio for pack today. Um, as stated by Beck wants to move the earth. And first I want to say my, it doesn't work. It doesn't work from my end. It looks like it's fine, Patrick. Yeah, now it works. Perfect. I'm sorry. First, a little bit uh, about Biofopec. We were founded in uh, 2009, and since the year 2012, we are part of the Silverfane Group. And for that reason, we have direct access to production facilities. This includes extrusion, printing, lamination, uh, and printing of film, as we also have thermal forming of PLA, and recently also pulp. Uh, about myself, I'm working for more than 20 years in this industry. Um, first to Natura, and since 2009, I established bio for pick And I'm also the initiator of Holland Bioplastics for the promotion of bioplastics in the Netherlands. And there, I'm the treasure holder. Um, it's times that we have to change. And now, I mean for good. Um, in the beginning, I... Um, when I started in this industry in 2000, I really felt like a donkey shot. Uh, besides, I had to convince cons customers. We also had to inform and convince the Dutch government and also the waste industry of the benefits of bioplastics. And in addition, I focused myself on packaging. And at that time, the industry wanted me wanted to me to go for waste bags and for shopping bags. And after 21 years. I know that you have to follow your own plan, your own heart and your own ambitions away from cobble roads with the aim of actual recycling with annual renewable resources. Everyone is talking about climate change and wants to realize a breakthrough as long as it produces the finest advantage. Therefore, I see myself now more as an Elon Musk than a donkey shot. 
Um, looking to the similarity between Biofopec and Tesla. After all, after all these years, I rightly can say that I'm a disturber, disturber, um, or popularly, um, you can call me a pain in the ass. Um, but we do this for a better environment, better for the prosperity, and better for a sustainable future. Both companies are driven with a mission, and we want to change the industry, and we need to change it right now. And both companies are led by visionaries. When we look to uh, the Intergovernment Panel of Climate Change, which recently report, uh, published a report, and that it was clearly stated that it's not 5 to 12, but that we are already over 12 when it comes to climate developments. Um, we do see that uh, the global rising temperature leading to extremes. And we have to reduce CO2 emissions now, not in 2020, or not in 2030, and certainly not in 2050. The conventional plastic industry is buying time, talking about good hope for increasing recyclable goals. Now, for mechanical recycling and towards to chemical recycling. Yesterday, I read a report from the So Association that customers do want to pay more for sustainable packaging. At least 55% of the people is willing to pay more because they want to contribute to a better environment. And they see it themselves that the weather gets to in the extremes. And we are responding to this and we're taking bioplastics to the next steps. Um, the next steps is we do not longer want to depend on other and powerful parties. We no longer want to have a discussion on a, a product level with the waste industry, whether something does compost, and believe me, it does, or does not compost in time. We have to prove ourselves over and over again whether we are compostable or not. We go for Biofopec 2.0. We will now, uh, we will not only invest in a new laminator, but again, we will invest in tests, certificates that we are certified home compostable. And I say again, as our industry has to prove and disprove everything that the conventional industry does not have to do. Think about the origin of the material. Do you have ever asked yourself where the petroleum is coming from. I know that you ask for Tamura where they can where they buy the pulp, they can say where they buy the pulp and from which country it comes. And also the conventional industry can claim recyclability, although we do know that 85% will end up into incineration or landfill. We are currently testing a home compostable laminate under home compostable circumstances. That means 26 weeks with a core temperature of 25 to 30 degrees. This is done by Din Sertko in Germany. And also the results will ensure we don't have no textile substances and are released in the process. And also the warm test is part of this test. Brand owners and, realists and retailers are confused. They want to achieve their corporate social responsibilities, but they do not want to be in the news negatively. So we are with spread legs, what to do? We think that home compostable solutions will be the answer. A few main customers of us like Kenko, Natalie Pam and Loftjox have already indicated that they are going to switch into home compostable materials. And again, we are an innovator in the packaging market. We are shaking up the packaging industry and breaking through existing conventions, not waiting if the waste industry is going to accept bioplastics in industrial composting. 
yes, we are the pain in the ass to be, uh, to be better. And that's our mission. And of course, I want to compare BioVopec with Tesla, but that's far from realistic. It's written that we have one big difference, but there are more. We don't have the money to go be, to be the global leader in compostable packaging. And Tesla's ambitions, our innovations take the company far into the galaxy. We, our ambitions and innovations bring the company into the ground. We don't want to have this any longer. We want to go uh, like this. We want to move the earth and change or die. That's it. Thank you, Patrick, for this very thought-provoking presentation. I like your comparisons. I even like Don Quixote. I'm Spanish, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> but Elon Musk sounds good. Um, next presenters are both from Sakmi Packaging and Chocolate. And I'm delighted to introduce Valentina Bergami and Flavio Giovannini. Valentina, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much, Amaya. Thanks for having us and giving us the chance to be here today and you know, share our views on a topic we consider one of the main challenges our industry is facing these days, green materials, compostable films. So my name is Valentina Bergami. I work in sales and marketing department at Sakmi Packaging and Chocolate in the wrapping business unit. And today I'm going to give a brief overview of our company and our portfolio and then introduce a case study we have chosen for you today. But before starting, let me stress out, it is with great interest we look at the new findings and innovations in the field of, of packaging materials. We as machine manufacturers uh, believe it is the only way uh, we have if we have strong partnerships with strong strategic partners like Futamora. We believe that is the only way we have to properly shape our machines today and also make them fit for the new challenges of the future, for the new challenges to come. You know, in the past, we had some very interesting and challenging projects that started with wrapping film producers asking to run some tests or even customers, so downstream partners to us, um, asking us, will you help us trying out this new material my marketing is considering for our new products? And I confess those were occasions we maybe back then didn't seek out 100% intentionally. But um, as you can imagine, those occasions brought us great benefits in terms of expertise, knowledge, new ideas. So we have learned that lesson. And this is why uh, over the past years, all of our business units have built their own labs which are dedicated to this, to experimenting, to making tests um, with machineries dedicated to uh, running tests, uh, also in the field of packaging materials. And um, so in this perspective, I think today's webinar is the perfect occasion for not only sharing our, our experience with compostable films, but also for possibly reaching out to new contacts um, who and people and reach people who might be interested in test capacity. So uh, after this, feel free to contact us for your new ideas. Having said that, let me start by introducing the SECME group with a couple of figures. Um, SECME is an international group founded in 1990. With, uh, it is a world leading supplier uh, of technology to various industries, ceramics, rigid packaging, beverage, advanced technologies and materials and packaging in chocolate. It counts 4,572 employees and operates in 80 companies in 27 countries worldwide. Now, a couple of words to the mission, as it is described in our sustainability report of 2020. And I bring that up because I think it is 
pretty much in line with the message we wanted to convey this uh, today. So point number one of the mission is research. SECME invests greatly in cutting edge research to drive technological innovation. Point number two, the capacity to generate technological synergy across different industries inside the group uh, and put the results out for the customers is one of the cornerstones of the SACME group. And last but not least, quality. SACME always sets eye on product and service quality to provide um, effective responses to the real needs of the markets it operates in. Now, if we come to our company specifically, SACME Packaging and Chocolate, it is composed by four business units, uh, process and molding, primary and secondary packaging, wrapping and tray forming. Um, these four BUs are located in three regions of Northern Italy, and the company is represented on the market by two very well-known historical brands like Carle Montanari and OPM. Uh, which operate in the industry since 1907, so quite a while now. And as you might see, we provide for turnkey solutions, literally from the small chocolate bean up to the cotton tray and the cotton box through the whole process. Um, our wrapping business unit, where Flavio and I work, is located in Castel San Pietro in the city of Bologna not far from the headquarters of the SECME group in Imola, and right in the middle of the so-called packaging valley uh, you might have heard of, uh, which is so-called uh, in Italy for the impressive number of, of companies active in this specific industry and segment packaging. Um, so we are the uh, wrapping machines specialists of the group, and we produce entirely in our plant in Casa San Pietro, which is very important to know. And um, this is our product portfolio. Uh, we have an impressive range of wrappers for planes. We literally cover all the wrapping styles available on the market. We have also wrappers dedicated to hollow figures and eggs, surprise eggs, Easter eggs, but we also have wrappers for chocolate small and big bars and for all for soft hard and chewy candies and precisely on candy wrappers we wanted to make our focus today because it is on our um, newly launched uh, candy wrapper we have tested the nacho flex by futamura the film by futamura so here's the wrapper we've chosen it is called h1k it is a monostyle machine, so dedicated to just one wrapping style, in this case, double twist, and it wraps hard and jelly candies. It has a hybrid technology designed to overcome the restrictions of the mechanical disc motion and achieve top feeding efficiency and guarantee top versatility. Um, this is a wrapper that, depending on the product you want to wrap, can reach up to 1,000 pieces per minute. And um, as I said, is the wrapper we have run the tests. Um, we have chosen to run the tests with Natoflex. Now, let me give the floor to Flavio, who is going to take you through the wrapping cycle from the point of view of the wrapping film and um, dig more into the tests we have run. I guess it's all from me and thank you very much. Okay, thank you Valentina for the presentation of this test. Uh, now we are talking about uh, the case study that we done on our H1K machine with the Netorflex uh, wrapping material. And uh, we go more deep in the technical aspects of the management of the film on the machines. So this is the, the machine. And we, uh, in this machine, in the left part of the machine, we feed the products. In the right part of the machine, we feed the film and we have to 
put our attention on uh, three sections. The first one is the unwinding of the paper of the film from the reels. The second one is the cutting section in which we develop the, the exact and precise length of the foil and uh, cut the film. And then uh, the wrapping section in which we perform uh, the final aspect of the product. Then starting from the first uh, task, uh, the big, uh, the big um, uh, work that we have to do in this first part is to transform the continuous motion of the unwinding in a intermittent motion of the machine because our machine are all intermittent. So uh, we realize this in two sections. The first one is this, the first unwinding of the film. Let me show you a short video in which we can see that for this operation, we need that the film is, is, has to be very, very um, elastic elastic and flexible to avoid breakages of it during this uh, unwinding section. And then the second one is the final buffering of the film before the cutting. In this section, we really transform the continuous motion in uh, intermittent motion, but also we have some stoppages do the no a product no paper system of our machines so if we don't have the product in the feeding system the machine continue to run but the film has to stops and restarts and also in this section as you can see we need flexibility uh, of the film then the film cutting is done unwinding the film by pushing it forward on top of the candy. We cut the, the, the film only when the final foil is over the, the candy to uh, have the precise positioning between the product and film. So uh, during this operation that you can see in this short video at high speed, 950 pieces per minute, uh, just to have an idea of it, of uh, how is the speed of the machine. In this video, you cannot see some format parts just to allow the vision of the unwinding of the paper. Obviously, this uh, video is not very interesting for understand what happens, but this in low speed shows you that uh, for do this job, we need a different, completely different mechanical characteristic of the film. The film has to be rigid because it's not supported and uh, has to maintain their planarity. Okay. So the third, uh, the, the third task is the wrapping and twisting. The first issue, the first uh, uh, operation that we do on the product is the for the forming of the tube around the products. Also in this case, we need to combine two mechanical characteristics, flexibility to fold it, and also rigidity to maintain the tube during the, the movement of the products. And then the final one is the twisting, in which we need a big resistance of the film to this mechanical solicitation. And also we need low memory effect. So we have that the, we need that the film after this twisting maintains the twist in their final positions. What are the possibility quality defects that we can find after this process? The first one is the, the wrong, is the broken twist. If you, if you see a broken twist in a product, uh, is a product that you cannot put in the market. Normally, this kind of defects uh, uh, is typical uh, with uh, paper-based material. And in, with this material, you can also find another 
defect that is a, the broken film that you cannot see when the product is closed, if wrapped, but you can see it only when you open the twist. Obviously, in this case, it's not a matter of look of the product, but it is a big matter in terms of shelf life of the products because the product is not closed. Another defect can be a completely open twist. This is a defect typical uh, with material with big memory effect, like polypropylene, for example. And another defect can be a loose twist. In this case, the product is not open, is closed, but uh, the look is not good. So we tested this material, Naturflex 30NM, to uh, understand uh, what happens on the machine at high speed. Uh, the, pay, the, the film is the, the Naturflex, the product is this uh, rectangular shaped candy, and the machine is the, our H1K at 950 pieces per minute, just to have an overlook of the test, a short video in which you can see the feeding system. We, um, we fill the pocket of the disc, just to phase the product with the film and the, the wrapping sections. Then the results. With this material, we noted the no defects that we seen in the previous, uh, in the previous slide. Uh, so in our case, the test is uh, was the result of the test is very, very good. Uh, the product is closed. The twists are uh, ever uh, closed without a reopening. The wrapping is tight to the product. And also the repeatability of the quality is very, very high. Uh, so for us, this is a material uh, that we can propose to our customers to run at high speed with compostable materials. Last one, not only double twist, like we've seen in this video, we've seen a video with double twist for candies, for example, but also for chocolate uh, pralines like this, we can use this material. We can use it with other wrapping style that needs the same mechanical characteristics, like twist on top for Boeros products or twist on side, for rectangular chocolate pralines. So with this, uh, um, I, I hope uh, I was able to show you with this, uh, uh, with this uh, slides and videos, uh, how, what in practice happened on the machines and uh, why the mechanical characteristic of the wrapping material are so important uh, for our point of view. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you very much, Flavio and Valentina. Um, with my technical background, I always like to see uh, film on machineries. That's one of my big things. Uh, and thank you to all our presenters. That brings us to the end of our presentations. Uh, we have received a number of questions that we would like now to, um, to endeavor to try to answer some of this. May I ask all the presenters perhaps to put their videos back? That would be the easiest way forward. Excellent. Have we got Patrick? Yes. The very first question is going to be for Patrick Lerche Larsen. Patrick, are you still here? Yes. Wait, yeah. wait, 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 wait. <laughs> He's pressing yeah. the right the right yes. buttons. Right. Quick question for you. I think uh, the question is, can we confirm that both the wrapper of the lollipop and the actual bag containing the lollipop are both made of compostable materials? Yes, they are both made of compostable materials from both the wrapper and bag. 
Excellent. That's the first question. And then another question for you is, do you think today's consumers really value the possibility of composting their wrappers, their packaging? So we're speaking about consumers. Your view, um, I guess. If, if you, uh, Patrick just uh, said it before, over 50% would do it, but uh, it's always the question what they say and what they do. I think it's uh, our responsibility as a producer to kickstart the consumer in the right direction. So it's, um, you, of course, it's not easy, but it will be a start. And they will sooner or later. You have more and more people who are ready also to buy biological food and that kind of stuff. Uh, 20 years ago, no one thought yeah. that, that would be an issue. So it's just uh, a start. It will be a big issue. Thank you. The next question is for Patrick, Patrick Gurritsen. Um, you mentioned industrial composting and home composting in your presentation and conditions for home composting. Would you be able to cover the big difference between industrial and home composting? Uh, it's mainly the temperature, what's the difference, and, and the time. So yeah. we do see that uh, in industrial, we have to go to 68 degrees for a certain peri period and for 180 days. And for home compostable, we do see 26 weeks and with a lower temperature. And then, of course, it will degrade in CO2, water, and biomass. Excellent. Thank you. Hopefully that's clear, but we can always send more information if people want more information on this subject. Correct. Another question for Flavio and Valentina. So do your wrappers also handle compostable films with chocolate products? As opposed to yes. test wrap, I guess. I can go, if I may. Flavio, is it OK? Um, yes, sure. As, um, as we explained before, um, we have focused today on candy wrappers, uh, but uh, the same principles are valid also for the chocolate pralines and other chocolate products. Um, our wrappers treat compostable films like mm, Futamara Natoflex also in combination with chocolate products, uh, with all the products uh, Maya showed earlier. And let me add, if I may, this is slightly off topic, but let me add, we are also active on other fronts, uh, like Flavio mentioned. Um, we are running a project with a big, big market player on our flow wrapping machines, in, in particular with paper-based uh, wrapping materials. And we have ongoing studies and tests with uh, tablet wrappers, uh, not only with Futamora, uh, Natoflex, but also with uh, um, paper-based films. So absolutely no problem with compostable films, uh, chocolate products, and also new uh, other green materials. OK. Uh, thank you very much for the answer. Another question. Uh, what would you need to arrange a test? You mentioned about arranging tests in your facilities and the availability of getting uh, materials tested. So if a company wanted to evaluate a material they're interested in, how would they go on about proceeding? But, uh, they have just to contact us because uh, we have ever uh, one or two machine available in this uh, test uh, lab. So it's just uh, a matter to uh, agree about uh, width of the film, uh, diameter of the inner reels, uh, etc. Because we obviously we prefer to have a film uh, with the right width for the product that we have available to test it. But uh, I think it is not, not a problem for the producer to send us the proper reel. We are ever, ever available to test materials, no matter, just also in a uh, in few days. Okay, I'm sure that's, that will provide the answer. So I think we'll wrap it up here. We are just under that one hour, we've done 50 minutes, which is really good timing. Thank you to all our speakers um, for covering the subject and hopefully, um, and thank you for our audience for their, their attention. Hopefully you will find uh, the webinar of interest and uh, different versions and views on, on, on this sector and what compostable films can do for confectionery. 
I hope you enjoyed the event. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to get in touch afterwards. Uh, these will be recorded and we will be uh, forwarding uh, the links for those that have not been available. And we will also pick up the questions that we did not manage to answer separately and answer those. Thank you very much again. Bye. Thank you.